Welcome to Sporty's series on learning to fly. I'm Spencer Suderman. You may have seen me previously in Sporty's Advanced Pilot Skills and IFR Insight series. I've spent the past 21 years flying air shows and making pilots safer by teaching upset recovery and spins. In this episode, we're going to see how ground reference maneuvers build upon the basic flying skills and prepare you for airport pattern work and landing with a crosswind. Now let's go up in a Cessna 172 at 1,000 feet over Jacksonville, Florida, where we are going to start with turning around a point and do a rectangular pattern. The goal of this maneuver is to fly around the point and stay in equal distance. Practice turning when there's wind in different directions. Let's look at an aerial view over the practice area where I'm about to fly the turn around a point in the plane. The center of those baseball fields is an easy landmark to see. The indicated airspeed should be constant around the entire circle. As the maneuver is entered going downwind, the ground speed is high because the plane is moving with the air mass. When it's a beam the point, roll into no more than 30 degrees of bank initially to start turning, then adjust as needed to maintain distance. As the downwind part of the maneuver is reached, the bank angle is shallowed because the plane is now turning upwind and the ground speed is decreasing as it moves against the air mass. Upon reaching the point where the plane is going upwind, the ground speed is the lowest and the bank is very shallow because the wind is going to push the plane towards the point, so a high turn rate isn't needed. At the most upwind part of this maneuver, the bank angle and turn rate must start to increase in preparation for a higher ground speed on the downwind portion, and the cycle starts all over again if you do more than one circle. And I'm gonna enter the maneuver going downwind. I'm gonna use those baseball fields over there, or corners of the baseball fields, because it's an excellent visual. All right, I'm down to my correct altitude here. There's my baseball field, really good visual. And I'm just that constant speed. And I'm gonna start turning around the point. As I go downwind, I have to turn a little steeper, not more than 30 degrees, because remember the wind's gonna blow me away. So I've gotta turn with more bank, pull a little harder, maintain my dip. I go upwind, the wind's gonna push me towards it. I don't need to bank as aggressively and turn as quickly. And I mostly look outside. This is a visual maneuver. Look at the baseball field. Now I'm going upwind. I can relax the bank because it'll push us in. I don't need to turn as quickly. And look at that. I'm just staying a nice distance. Of course, we'll look at the track from four flight. We'll see. Uh, how good our circle is around the point here. So I'm just going to complete one circle and then we'll take off. We don't want to stay over people's homes and annoy them too much with airplane noise. I'm getting downwind, so I have to increase the bank a bit, go a little faster. And look at that, we've completed a complete circle. And hopefully it's equidistant, we'll check that on the log. Turning around a point is a fun and easy maneuver. The ground track from four flight looks good, but what would it have looked like if I just held the same bank angle around the circle? As the plane drifted farther inland, it would have drawn an oval since no wind compensation was used. Turning around a point quickly teaches the effects of wind on turning flight and how to maneuver the plane while compensating with bank angle. Next, we are going to see a rectangular pattern which trains you to fly in the airport traffic pattern. This involves more time straight line flying and less time turning. The lesson here is learning to fly in a crosswind so the plane travels along a course which is not the same as the heading where the nose is pointed. Looking at this aerial view over the Northeast Florida Regional Airport, we see the wind is from the Northeast and the traffic pattern is using left turns for runway 31. If the plane is heading in the same direction as the runway during takeoff, notice how it's blown off course by the wind. The way to correct for wind is to crab the plane into the wind which means point the nose on a heading that compensates for the wind and keeps it over the runway's center line. But how do you do this if the runway is underneath the plane and you can't see it? You peek out the side window for a visual reference to line up with, such as the taxiway, which is highlighted in green next to the runway. Now let's look at an aerial view over the practice area where I'm about to fly a rectangular pattern in the plane. I selected a long stretch of narrow waterway as visual reference to represent the taxiway on the airport. Notice the airplane needs to be crabbed into the wind compensating for drift to stay on course. 
the wind's coming from this direction. I can see it's drifting me over this way. So I need to crab the airplane out a little bit in order to fly a straight line. All I'm doing is looking outside the airplane and just lining up with waterway, keeping it in the same relative position. This also means when turning from upwind to crosswind, more than 90 degrees of heading change is required. Now going to turn to the left. No crab is needed on the crosswind section since the wind is directly behind the plane. I'm at a right angle flying away from it. The turn to downwind also requires more than 90 degrees of turn to set up the crab into the wind. Now I'm going to turn left again and parallel the waterway. I'll parallel to the waterway. I'll see if I'm drifting in or out. Wind's in this direction. That tells me I'm going to need a little bit of a crab direction of the wind to maintain a straight line. When turning to base, less than 90 degrees of heading change is required because the plane will be flying directly into the wind. Like I'm staying about equidistant from it. Now I'm going to turn back in towards it. I'm going to roll out at a right angle about here. Wind's coming direction. Turning on to final also requires less than 90 degrees of heading change to set up the crab and stay on the final approach course. I'm going to turn and parallel the waterway. It'll be a really good visual of how well I'm doing compensating for crosswind. There we are. Now, going perfectly parallel to the waterway. I know the wind's coming from this direction. If I need to turn the nose of the airplane a little bit into the wind, I have a straight line. And I'm visuals on the, using visuals on the ground to over my ground reference and parallel to the waterway. Far so good. Ground reference maneuvers are fun and flying a rectangle in the wind can be rather challenging. So let's see how I did. Looking at the ground track from foreflight, it's mostly good. However, we can see that I crabbed into the wind just a bit too much on the downwind leg of the pattern. The goal in flight training is continuous improvement, so expect to repeat some tasks until they can be performed to the Airman Certification Standard that will be used by the examiner for your check ride. Thanks for riding along and I hope this flight gave you a feel for what learning to fly is all about. To take the next step, Check out Sporty's Learn to Fly course, which includes over 15 hours of HD video training and comprehensive written test preparation tools. Head over to sporties.com courses to check out a free demo and get started.